Good evening. I'd like to call the March 21st, 2022 Berlin Suck Board to order. Um, with us tonight are Flo Smith, Joe Staub, and Carl Pardon on my left. Also, Vince Conti, a town administrator, and Diane Isabel, town treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, one addition, uh, and that is the road closure discussion with the uh, highway super. Okay. And anything else? That's it. Uh, public comment. Hearing none. Um, uh, CV Runners Club permit. We have a special event permit application from the Central Vermont Runners, and they've done these before. So I make the motion that we approve <coughs> the permit application as presented. And the event is on April 16th, 2022, and they estimate attendance of 100. And the location will be at the Montpelier High School. And the event will be from 8.45 a.m. to 10.15 a.m. Were they going to post uh, notices along the road like they usually do? That was my impression from reading it. And they also have the liability insurance as well. And it is a 10-miler. I'm looking to see... Brad, whether they did indicate they'd be putting up signs. I didn't see any signage indicated on the application. Okay. Do you know, Vince, have they indicated that they'll be he, putting he up signs? They have volunteers along the 10 miles alongside the on the road. So. Usually they put up signs a day or two before so everybody has a clue you know, before they run. I can call and ask him. Yeah. You can hear a motion on this? I make a motion to approve the special event permit application for the Central Vermont Runners for the event of April 16th, 2022. Second. I'll second. Any further discussion? So you, you said that they have in the past put signs. Well, there, there was one group that did. I have a hard time keeping them all straight. Last year it was this group and they, they did have some signage. Okay. Last okay. year it was. Except Vermont Runners Club, same group. Same guy, Eddie. Yeah, just so, I'll, I'll mention it to him. I will. I'll give him a call and ask him to put up some signs. As well as have the volunteers out here. Yeah, because they're running both directions. Mm -hmm. Well, they would anyway, but both sides of the road. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, but he's, he said that that's what the volunteers are forced to keep them on the on one side of the road. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, no other discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. And Central Vermont Prevention Coalition presentation, Olivia LeClerc. She's with us tonight to, to speak on, on their behalf. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm also here with my coworker, Eva Zarat, who's going to um, go ahead and introduce our coalition um, and start us off, if that's all right. Sure. Hi, everyone. We have, um, we're really excited to be here tonight. We just want to tell you a little bit about who we are, and then we're going to get into um, some up an upcoming event that we have. So um, my name is Eva Zaret. I'm a public health specialist at Central Vermont Medical Center <clears throat> and the project coordinator for the Central Vermont Prevention Coalition, which is an interdisciplinary co collaboration uh, professional organizations and agencies across central Vermont um, and the state that work together in the fields of substance use um, prevention, harm reduction, and disease prevention, treatment, recovery, um, and some other areas. We have partners who are involved from law enforcement and youth services and housing. So a wide variety of partners at the table who all touch or are touched by substance use in some way. And then the hospital serves as the foundational backbone member of the coalition. Um, our mission is to create a harmonized and stigma-free system of care in central Vermont, where there's no wrong door and no wrong time for anyone to get help and support for a substance use disorder or a concern that they have, um, and to prevent the initiation of substance use and the participation of people and families uh, who have experience with the harms of substance use are vital to our organization. Um, we were founded in 2017 
um, and have been meeting monthly every month um, for many years. Um, and quite a few really uh, interesting and um, unique collaborations and projects have come out of this group that have actually been adopted um, statewide. So we're often sort of the incubator for ideas um, that get picked up elsewhere. So um, I'd like to turn it over to Olivia to let you know about um, an important event that we have coming up. Yeah, so one initiative that's come out of our coalition has been these drug and alcohol community forums that we've done throughout Washington County. Um, and we've organized these forums based on supervisory union. And we actually have one upcoming on Tuesday, April 5th from 6 to 7.30 for the Washington County Supervisory Union, so including your town. And um, we are hoping to make this event hybrid, but we're still looking for an in-person option, and that's going to be updated on our Facebook event um, that I'm happy to like pass along. And for now, though, it is going to be on Zoom, and we wanted to just be here tonight to let you guys all know about this event. Um, we welcome you all to please attend and um, wanted to be here to ask or answer any questions that you might have um, that you want us to address in these forums. Um, or any in, insight on how to promote them um, would be really valuable. So I have a quick question. Uh, have you already contacted the school board and are you working with them uh, to for this uh, presentation? Or? Yes, um, yeah. yes, uh, great question. We did already actually meet with the school board and our information is gonna be put out in the upcoming newsletter um, for this forum um, and they've been really helpful, but yeah. What time is the event on the 5th of April? It's from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Okay. Yeah, and we, um, we've we held these for a couple of other supervisory union areas, as Olivia just said, um, and they've been really a good opportunity for community members to come together, to start a conversation, to ask questions of a panel of experts that we bring. Um, and to also organize around ideas that they have. So in Orange County, they decided that they really needed more after school activities for students. So we were able to get um, them connected with technical assistance and funding to set up a new after school program. Montpelier has really highlighted the need for like a parent education. So we're developing a series um, to respond to that need. So we organize it by supervisory union because we have data from the youth risk behavior survey that is specific to your schools. And so we can look at that and say, this is what students, you know, let's say at U32 are struggling with. This is where they're doing well. Um, so we can tailor suggestions that we have um, based on that data. And we do lean heavily in the youth prevention sort of realm at these forums but they're not exclusively youth prevention um, focused. And so folks are welcome to come and ask questions about treatment for adults or recovery services that are available. Um, we can let people know that, for example, you can come in to the emergency department 24 seven anytime and receive start receiving treatment at that moment and get connected to services the next day. So um, if there are no other questions, um, we appreciate your time. We hope to see you there. Um, and Olivia will be in touch with if we do develop um, an, a hybrid um, option. And if you have suggestions on an in-person location, that would be most welcome. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Them? Okay, thank you both very much. Thanks thank so much. Cool. Yep. Um, Conservation Commission sign funding approval. Yes, we have uh, Wendy Lynn from the Conservation Commission to, to discuss that with the board. Hi, well, um, I'm here to request um, the purchase of eight signs, excuse me, <clears throat> for the town forest. Um, the signs are going to be posted mostly on the town forest, which is south of the um, cell tower. And part of the need is because we have um, a new trail going through there, and we want to prevent um, Hello. motorized vehicles. Oh, pardon you. Can you hear me? 
Yep. Yes. Okay. We're trying to keep motorized vehicles from going through that area. It's a pretty sensitive area um, as far as the habitat and the forest there. Um, so we're looking at eight signs. They would be posted at the south end of the Bass Trail on the um, town forest, the north end. There would be one coming um, in off of the class four road, another one at the landing, um, and then another one just to keep the vehicles from coming into the conservation land. Um, and we've got a place that we've looked at, it's called Campground Signs. It's online, they make stock signs. They're under $25 each. And the total cost should be um, $186.98 for each signs, and that includes the tax. I guess, there, are there any questions? We don't, but we don't, we don't deal with that company either. And how are they, I mean, are you going to be paying that out front? Are you expecting the town to cut a check? Or how are you expecting it to be paid? Um, we could pay it and then be reimbursed. I'm not sure how the town does it. <clears throat> right, because if it's a company, like let's say it's a company that we deal with, uh, then you could just charge it and then we would pay for it. But like I say, this I've never heard of this particular company. We don't have an account with them. So I just don't know exactly how we want to go about it. But I guess it leave it up to the board if you want them to issue a check. Hey, Joe, do you have a company that you deal with for making signs? Uh, yes, uh, always on time signs. Okay. Yeah. That's and and have, we, have we checked on them at all? I'm assuming those are probably aluminum signs, reflective type deals. That's the case to use. Yeah. Work safe? Yeah. Okay. And does work safe have those kind of signs? Does it make anything if you want? Oh, you gave them what it looks like. Yeah, well, I'm just, you got the design. Yeah, I'm assuming all these companies are bloody competitive. I don't think so. We, um, I guess the reason that we were looking at this other company was that they make stock signs, which are um, less expensive as opposed to having a custom made sign. Yeah. Um, we, we can look at always on time because we have used them before and see if what the cost is for making a, a custom yeah. sign or if they have stock signs available. Yeah. WorkSafe is the one we deal with the most. So I have a just a quick question. Uh, are any of these eight signs, uh, the placement of these signs isn't going to conflict with any current uh, policy or trail use change mm -hmm. in any way, is it? No, it's actually stating what's in our management plan. Um, okay. Thank so you. So it's just letting people know that. Okay. What's their account balance? Hmm? What's their account? Uh, Conservation Commission, off the top of my head, I don't know, but it is in the thousands. Okay. So if we're talking, you know, two, less than $200, they have more than enough. Yeah. Okay. Enough. Any other discussion on this? We have, have they decided which way they're going to go? Um, well, Wendy said that they were the cheapest. It, it's less expensive because it's a stock sign. It's already made yeah. instead of a custom sign. Yeah. Where are these people out of? Um, I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to check. Yeah, I'm just curious. I mean, we could try to find a Vermont dealer that does stock signs. Also, if you would prefer to do it that way. No, you've already done the research, so. Right. I mean, to me right now is just, do you want us to, um, if, if you have a, a, a total price with you know, all the dollars and who I would send a check to, then on April 5th, our next meeting, or April 4th, our next meeting, I could cut a check and then send it to them. Or if you're going to go ahead and buy them and then you give me uh, you know, proof that you paid it, then I can just reimburse you guys. So whichever way you want to go on that route. It'd be quicker if you bought it and, I, and we reimbursed you, I believe. We can do that. We'd like to get the signs up okay. you know, soon so that we don't have ATVs going across that part of the property. So I can um, make the purchase and then just send you the receipt. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yep. that'd be great. Here, a motion to have the Conservation Commission purchase the signs for uh, 
preventing uh, misuse of the town forest land for under $250. So moved. There you go, Kyle. Second. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to repeat that. Right. <laughs> well said. Uh, any further discussion on this? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, motion carries. Thank just, you very much. Okay, just be sure you get Thank Diane you. the receipt. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate you. Okay. Um, assistant town treasurer position discussion. Okay. Where do you want to start? You got all. You should have all received. There's there's two things, right? There's the job description, and then there's the job posting as well. Yeah. For your comments and discussion. Um. It's a, basically, it's a multifaceted position. And maybe I don't know if you want to speak to from Diane's perspective. Well, what, I guess what my perspective is priority. right now there's nobody to back me up on payroll or payables or anything. So if something happens to me, we'd be in a world of trouble. Um, obviously, to me, my job is like a job and a half right now because I've been giving given so many other you know, other pieces. However, um, I know that Vince can use help at times, and I know that I want somebody back up, and I want to actually be able to give pieces of my job to this person to train them because eventually in you know not too far future i'll be retiring so i want you know somebody to be trained um, that's what i'm looking for but also like i said to help vince and then we also have a project which we call use docstar for and that is like we're trying to put all of our records into one place so that we can retrieve them anytime in the future and right now i just don't have time to work with that i do very little with that and it's an expensive program and it could do a lot for us and be very, very helpful to have somebody in you know time where they don't have a lot to do to start you know, entering all of these documents into the system that anyone can retrieve, including yourselves. So when you say you, you have like a job and a half, right? You're falling behind. Yes. Currently, I am falling behind. Absolutely. I understand. <laughs> um. So you're you're going with a full time position. Have you uh, did you take and uh, talk to any of the universities around? I've reached out, but I haven't got any any feedback from any of them yet. I reached out to Norwich and um, what used to be BTC, not BTC, Vermont College. Vermont College, that's part of Norwich now. Yeah, they're part of Norwich, and they're gonna they, they're gonna get back to me this week with their thoughts on what may or may not be available through them as well. Yeah. So you know. Uh, Diane, do you know of any other uh, colleges or does even uh, uh, community college have uh, accounting programs? They do offer accounting programs, I'm certain. But yeah, that might be a place to reach yeah, out. I need to reach out to them. Okay. Yeah. Just try to hire local. That's the only other thing. Can I ask a quick question? I, I may be uh, just catching up uh, to the issue, but have, has there been discussion about um, about this in the previous yeah, select board meeting. So has the decision already been made to make the hire or is that okay? No, this is what we're here for tonight. Right. That's, that's mm -hmm. part of why we're here. I didn't I didn't want to uh rehash issues <laughs> that have already been decided that I didn't happen to to yeah. see. No. Very good Looking question. Um and then uh what were what what's the consensus for the uh salary? I don't think we have a consensus because we haven't really um, talked a lot about it. We initially put some money in the budget, probably not enough to be quite frank. Uh, I think we put forty thousand in. Yeah, but we that, took that out. You're right, but that was again that was part of the. You know, that's when we were thinking part time, wasn't it? Exactly, we were thinking part time at that time. So I think that's something that we need to need to decide where we want to go with, and I think it needs to be based on. You know, like anything, it needs to be based on experience. If mm -hmm. we hire a new grad, a young new grad, not so much. But if mm -hmm. we hire someone with, you know, five to ten years of experience, then it's you're probably talking a little bit different to attract them these days. The way the hiring is going, definitely salary negotiable, commensurate on experience. Yeah. 
I'm probably going to throw out a low number, right, to start with. I think, you know, 50, 55 is probably as low as we'll be able to go to get the talent that, that we want. Well, 55 with uh, the Bennies is... Uh, uh, yeah, that, that... That really brings... It could the, be up the, to the 70. The Bennies make a big difference. That's going to put them probably a little over 70 with Bennies. Yeah. Total. Total cost. So with your half position... And the project for the file, does that make it 40 or not quite? They have to also help Vince. Yeah, there, yeah. There, there's okay. no shortage of, of work when, when we're talking about. So you're not looking for work when it comes to your side either. You have that work. I, I have, uh, yeah, fair amount of work. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, no, are you falling behind? No, I'm tre treading water. I'm okay. Okay. There, you know. there, there are some things that that could be delegated so Vince could spend his expertise in other areas. I, I could do more. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of things are seasonal. Yes, absolutely. Oh yeah. You know, it, so it, it all varies. I think the important one of the important things that she brought up though, again, as we're as we're moving forward, as we're growing, if you just walk through the offices, you're going to see dozens and dozens of cabinets that all have documentation in them that are all on paper that we probably don't even know what we have, right? And it, it would be more than a full-time job just for somebody for the next five years to go through that documentation, put it into Docstar in a filing system so that it's retrievable and we can find what, we, what we're looking for. It, it's, and that doesn't even take into account digitizing of land records that, that we haven't even discussed yet, but that's on the list of things for us to discuss in the near future as well. But that's just the day-to-day -day documentation that we, we should have, the drawings and, and things that we don't have, you know, filed where you can get them readily available or even know that they may exist. So I'd like to take a step back and, and go from the big picture rather than the details of the position. Um, in the last select board meeting, we discussed uh, uh, the town clerk and the assistant town clerk, and I think it was understood that the assistant town clerk is a is a mandated by law position I think. Um, and and i kind of did a little rough research and it seems like a lot of towns in vermont have a town clerk and a treasurer and the treasurer serves as the assistant town clerk and the town clerk serves as the assistant treasurer so there is some reciprocity and there is a built-in backup uh, and, uh, you know, going back probably 15 years, uh, when Berlin switched from an elected treasurer to an appointed treasurer, I think we lost that connection between the town clerk and the treasurer as far as, um, uh, you know, continuity of management. Right? Vince is probably your direct uh, yes, yes. superior right now. And uh, so... There, there's a bit of a detachment between the town clerk's office and the town treasurer right now. Uh, is that anything that that uh, could be reconciled a little bit for for some reciprocity in any way, or has anybody tried, or has it even been discussed or thought of, thought about? Well, or? it's just like, and you brought this up yourself. I'm appointed, Rosemary's elected, and so she has the right to, and the person that she has working for her works exclusively for her. Mm -hmm. Could we share that person? I mean, technically, it sounds like we could, but I don't know if we could sure. because I'm appointed and right. she's elected. Sure. So yeah. I don't understand how we can make that cohesive. And I agree with you. I understand what, exactly what you're saying. But I just don't know how to make that happen if we can. Mm -hmm. The other problem is also is that Rosemary and uh, Corinne are both very busy. If Diane is out or something happens, how do you take them away from their job to do this job? Yeah. Then the other problem is their training. Uh, I'd much rather have an assistant treasurer who is an accountant than an assistant treasurer who is good at clerical and clerk work. Not that I'm saying that you know it can't be done, but and then the other problem is, of course. In, in the future years, Diane's going to retire, and then I'm, sh I'm sure Rosemary is too. So it's going to come down to where do we have the, uh, 
you know, you, you want to have a, a well of a, we need a succession plan and a transition plan for, for both those positions. Yeah, and I don't uh, see coming up. And the other, the, and the last problem is, is that as we were just discussing that this office is no longer uh, like East Walden, you know, it, we've outgrown the, uh, we've outgrown it. I'm not saying we're quite to Montpelier and Barry standards, but we kind of outgrown that part where you can have a few hired people in the office do all, everything. It, it's just, it just can't be done anymore. Not that I can see. Speaking of outgrown, do we have the physical space in our current uh, <laughs> town for another for another I'm person? I'm glad you asked that question because that's on the uh, on an upcoming uh, select board meeting agenda to discuss. <laughs> there are there are some options there. We can create some space, and I'll just give you a quick example. For example, there's there's the Lister's office. They're here one day a week. We can get a job trailer, hook it up, give them all the amenities. And open that office up for another another person. So that that that's one quick solution. Um, that's not not too expensive. But your observation is correct. We're getting tight. We'll make another office out of this room. <laughs> yeah, we could. It'd be real cozy meetings so we have a public turnout. <laughs> yeah. In looking at the job description, I was just going to suggest that under number three, when it goes on to say uh, act as human resource coordinator for employee benefits, I'm thinking we should add in assistant human resource coordinator for employee benefits so that it's effectively both of you with you being the lead. Right. Especially with the position being assistant I just, treasurer, I not the... on that because I tried to make it all inclusive. If you read under duties and responsibilities, support and assist, support and assist in mm -hmm. all of those functions. Mm -hmm. They're not in charge of any of them. They they assist her in all mm -hmm. of those. I think we should just add in there, especially specifically, specifically because it almost is. It almost sounds as if, despite that being there at the top as a caveat, that it could be perceived as that person being the lead okay. and I wouldn't want that to be misconstrued. Brad, can I can I ask a question or can I comment? Sure, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> while I have no doubt about the needs of um, needs in the town, um, I, I'm just wondering if I've wondered lately if we should be doing a needs assessment, having somebody come in and assess the assess what the, you know, we talked about doing a physical needs assessment. I think we should do a, a personnel needs assessment as well. Um, and it's something that I, I know we've talked about at the planning commission that there's resources out there available, because as you know, I'm gonna be haunting you now for someone to work on the town center and economic development. Um, and that's, so that's another position that I think we need. Um, so I just I'm just wondering if we want to think holistically uh, before before advertising a position about what the needs really are, and maybe one position maybe it's more than one position, but if that one position could do multiple things, um, I don't know. I'm I'm th now I'm now I'm thinking out loud, but um, I just I just you know want to want to put a bug in your ear because that's also something that I think the planning commission is going to be coming to you regularly uh, to try to to try to see if we can get some sort of an economic development or town center coordinator position <clears throat> for the future. We had talked about it a few years ago, but it didn't happen. Yep. So, yep. <laughs> so just, just, just an FYI. <laughs> and I'm happy to look into that, the, the availability of resources from either the league or the regional planning commission and doing some sort of formal assessment if that's something that you're interested in doing or hearing about. <clears throat> I, think, I think it is. Um, the only the only thing I I worry about is um, right now uh, is the uh, critical need really for the assistant uh, treasurer position because of yep. all the uh, all the filing and everything else that needs to get done plus some of the billing. Yep. No, I hear you, and I totally get it. I know I know the town's growing, and you know the the staff hasn't grown much over the years. So. <laughs> yeah. But just a thought. Okay. Well, I don't see anything wrong with with getting an outside eye on this to uh, give us a uh, 
a uh, idea of what else we might need. But uh, my only concern is right now is to uh, get somebody in here and get them trained. Yep. Not that I think no. Diane's going anywhere soon. <laughs> <laughs> and I would add that Diane's doing a fabulous job, but I think it's really important to have the succession planning. Oh, and absolutely. Training. And I think the time is now. The need is prevalent. Yeah, and no, and, I, and that's fine. But I, but I still would, you know, I just wondered if you would be interested in doing that. Sure, I understand absolutely. this, this, this uh, immediate need, but just for mm -hmm. to, to sort of assess future needs so that we can plan you know, rather than doing it year to year, we can say, okay, maybe two years from now we need exposition. So it's sort of, mm -hmm. there's sort of a, a plan out there. Well, that, that kind of fits Thank with you. what we talked about. One of the things that we talked about in that, I don't want to call it a retreat that we had over at the Comfort Inn. Yeah. The meeting was right, building a some sort of succession five, 10 year plan as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that fits, Carla, I think, from my perspective. I'd be happy right. to, you know, work with you yeah, on that. Yeah, we can that. talk about it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Carla. You're welcome. There. So now the, the killer question, Diane, is um, where's the money? <laughs> if we didn't put it in the budget, we, we could be going over budget, no matter what we do. I don't have, we don't have any other have area. Come out of the, um, uh, funds, right, funds. Which is, but that's just going over budget. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just borrowing. Yeah. Borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. Well, what is what you did uh, the year before when you increased the town clerk salary and then made the assistant town clerk full time? That was not in the budget for FY22. It was voted on after the budget was approved and we still gave them you know, yeah. those reasons. So I'll throw this out as well. Uh, on Front Porch Forum, I put out a uh, community feeler to get public sentiment on, uh, on some of the issues. Uh, this is one of the two issues that I, I put out and uh, um, I didn't get a lot of responses, uh, maybe a dozen, uh, but I think th there was uh, definitely a, a mood that uh, we needed to ask a lot of questions about it. So the assessment certainly makes sense to me. Um, and I think a lot of the comments I got, and I'm not sure if I agree or not, and, and I kind of am, am seeing more and more that there is a need uh, is going from zero to 60. <laughs> or in this case, zero to 40 uh, for the for the a full time position. Um, so anyway, the comments seem to be like maybe easing into it might make uh, more sense with a, a part time rather than a full time. Uh, others were resistant to to any uh, addition to the budget. Um, and. And I think you'll get those comments when you when you throw it out for for anybody's. Uh, anybody's thoughts, but uh, I just wanted to share that. That's what I heard from the community from about a dozen responses. Yeah. Well, I mean, no matter the the problem, like I said, the problem I see is, is if uh, should anything happen, we are kind of out in the we're out of the loop. I mean, we we've got nobody to take the place. Right. Um, as far as having it part time, if we have work for a full time person, is it easier to hire somebody part time or is it easier to hire somebody full time? Don't know till you try. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, well, your part time does not have what kind of benefits would a part time? Well, um, if they they would still get the VMERS, okay, or the pension. Because no matter what, the part-time person probably more than 24 hours a week. I'm thinking, you know, maybe 25. But if they're under 24 hours a week, then there would be no benefits to speak of. Okay. Except for I think we did have a part-time person at one point. They earned uh, time off at a very, very low rate. You know, in other words, it'd be like four hours a month that they could accumulate for time off. That was it. But once they reach 24 hours a week, then they get onto the pension plan. But they still would not have insurance. Any other discussion? So if you put it out as a part-time, you, you could almost answer the, answer the fact that we don't have the money set aside. So it's just a portion of it. 
I don't, I don't know. I think it goes back to what is it easier to hire a full time or part time? It's kind of hard to hire anyone right now, anyway. That's, that's, but well, certainly it's hard to get anyone right now, whether it's it's part time or full time. Yeah. I mean, well, my my thoughts are right. Um, shoot for the moon, yeah. right? Go for full time, and if we don't can't find the right candidate, we will have to dial it back to, to part time anyway. Because again, my concern is I think Brad hit on it. In three to five years, she's going to retire. Yeah. And then where are we? If we don't have someone that knows we're going to struggle for a while and maybe have to farm it out while someone's being trained to do some of the things that she does from the accounting side, as well as the tax collecting. Yeah. I threw the five out there. <laughs> I, would, uh, I would also throw out that in a, in a job posting, you could uh, even list it as uh, part time with the potential of becoming full time. Yeah, that's an option. Yeah. Uh, and and I think in today's mentality, I, I call it the COVID mentality, where uh, fewer and fewer fewer and fewer people like to work <laughs> or want to work, and fewer and fewer people want to work forty hours. So part-time might be more attractive to, to some potential candidates. And again, I'm not necessarily advocating that. I'm throwing that out there for yeah. discussion since <laughs> this isn't a vote night, right? This is a discussion night. So. Might be. Right. Could be a vote. <laughs> so it makes a motion. <laughs> but. I'm a proponent of full-time. And the reason that I'm a proponent of full-time is that I think the need is there. I think it's critical. And I think that there are going to be staff that don't always um, come in um, to the hours that you want them. So if you have part-time, there's illness and what have you, all of a sudden you don't have very many hours in the week. Whereas a full-time, you know, it gives the aura of more commitment. And uh, I just really feel that we need a full-time position to back up and support you and just what was discussed before in terms of what the needs are and how far you want to see that assistant help you. Um, I don't think we would get the same level of uh, what we need with a part-time staff. Would take more time to train and less time to be doing the work and take you away from what you're doing during the training process. And I think it would kind of be a moot point if you did that with a part-time staff member. Mm -hmm. um, the you so you haven't called it. You haven't got a hold of Norwich or any of the other. I'm waiting to hear back from Norwich. Well, um, in the meantime, why don't you get a hold of uh, UVM has an accounting. They do. UVM and a few of the other schools around, and we'll take and uh, see what the uh, kind of get a feel for uh, from them what the if it's part time or full time would be the uh, way to fly. And I would recommend involvement in a job fair if there are job fairs locally that are happening. If uh, you might be able to either be there, Vince, or send a representative on your behalf, but I think it would be. Um, helpful, you know, to look at um, folks that are out there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Any other discussion on this? It, uh, just a quick idea that uh, I'd like to throw out. Um, and again, I, I don't know the office dynamics, uh, but uh, I, I was wondering, uh, especially in the near term, uh, looking at uh, until either a part-time or a full-time is hired, um, looking to perhaps incentivize um, the assistant clerk into a little cross-training uh, for emergency situations where um, we, we mentioned the enterprise fund, uh, some, some of the work you do is for the enterprise fund and in their accounting. Mm -hmm. So like even uh, a little bit of training for the assistant clerk, it may be in what you do, and potentially, I'm, all, I'm assuming that the assistant clerk makes a, a lower hourly rate than, than 
uh, an accounting or a treasurer would. So maybe an incentivization for the assistant clerk for a small number of hours for emergency training between now and the time we do come up with a solution to the to the um, you know too much work for for one person to do right, but, and that might you know be attractive for uh, the clerk's office to take advantage of. I don't know. I don't know the dynamic in the office. Every office is different. I get so. along with both of them. That's fine. But still, it still comes to the question is, you know, because she works exclusively for the town clerk, will a town clerk share her? Can she or sure. will she? I just don't. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a that's, what that's a quick, quick, quick question. And it might be answered like say, yes or no quickly. Yeah. So, so, and it, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know the dynamic and I haven't spoken to anybody about the idea. It's just an idea. So. And some tasks, your backup support to Vince, correct? Like payroll? Yeah, I'm a weak one, but yes. <laughs> I remember when, you know, we were in the process She's of hiring you, there was some, no, I, I know that that's, you've been doing some of that and that's appreciated. Yeah, he and I do work a lot together. That's great. It I really makes a difference. I, say, I just can't do this. Vince always steps in. That's excellent. Yeah. So I think Vince, uh, if you can find out um, for next meeting, yep, the uh, part time, how the availability of people for part time compared to full time, yeah. So we have an idea of what we're looking at. I'll talk to the universities. I'll look for some job fairs. See if I can, if there's any between now and then as well that I can at least go yeah. and chat with people on. Um, and I'll even talk to some uh, hiring agencies and see what their. Uh, thoughts are in the hiring environment right now and, and yeah. what they're seeing the, the trend may be yeah okay anything else on this so just just as cvrpc and the league are good good resources even for salary information then yeah thank you carla and and what other towns are experiencing in terms of hiring and all that so i would check with them yeah i will thank you any other discussion on this if not, we'll move on to office building and garage security system quote. Okay, there's about what four pages worth of quotes in there. I think okay. more, wasn't it? I, I, four, felt like, I felt like I think I snuck another one in right. as I didn't, <laughs> didn't have it before. Um, so again, this is this is from Roundhill. I, I did reach out to uh, two other agencies, and they were either too busy um, or didn't get back to me. It was actually three other agencies, I think. Um, but long and the short of it is these guys have already worked with us before. Um, they've done the, the setup that the police currently have as well. So they're familiar with us. Um, the good thing is, good thing, another good thing with these guys, as when I spoke to them uh, a couple of months ago when they gave us this, right? They, they informed me that their price was probably going to go up after the first of the year because of the whole supply chain issue or whatnot. Um, but I talked to him uh, last week before this, this meeting and he, uh, he was willing to hold his prices regardless of that at this point. Um, if we did decide um, in the next couple of weeks to move forward or not with, with this. So there, again, there's there's different um, different things that apply here, right? The, the, the big one, uh, Brian, you had asked me, that's the one that I added. Um, but I forgot to include was for the door cards. Yeah. Right. That's a that's a big one for the key cards for all the doors. Uh, we do have the possibility if we want to control the entrances more or reduce. Right. We can reduce the card key readers. Like, do we need one for this door and for Diane's door? Or do we keep them on keys and just car key? Car key. It's killing me that word. The front door, right? For act for that kind of access. That, that, that there's some flexibility there to do that for the price on this because that's the big that's the big hitter. That one is about a little over 15 grand by itself mm -hmm. to do all the doors. Ow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then we have um, again for the town garage. Uh, there's no cameras over there right now, inside or outside. Um, so they've got nothing. Um, so there's there's putting in a camera. And there's and there is the um, the recorder over there, and that's about uh, thirty nine fifty eight to set up the town garage with security. So that's four cameras outside, one camera in. No, I think it's two cameras outside and one inside. 
if I remember correctly. Oh, four. There's four cameras. Four. I'm reading it off your paperwork. Yeah, I should let it read. <laughs> it is four. Then there is the police department in the town office. Uh, that's four cameras. Uh, they're going to upgrade, I think, two of the cameras in the police station that uh, that don't, uh, they're old and outdated. Some of their equipment is old, basically, at that point. And the recorder, that was 67 for that portion. Oh, um, Vince? Mm-hmm. So this is actually 13 cameras. Is this like a total on the project or something? Because what I'm seeing is 10 cameras outside, three cameras inside for the police department and town office. Yes. So that's the, the police in the town. So that's the cameras that they have now. They have seven now. And I think there's, like I said, either three or five that are gonna be replaced. There's, we don't have visibility. Uh, on that corner of the building okay. by Diane's entrance. I know there's a camera there. We don't have visibility of the front entrance. So there's a camera there for that. Um, and then the camera on this cor corner is not very good. That's one of the ones outside that's gonna be replaced as well. Now, which one of those cameras uh, is for the, uh, is uh, focused on the, uh, uh, Exchange area. This one on this corner of the building out here. Right. And Tim's sand pile. Don't forget the sand pile. It's the sand pile. That's yeah. important. Well, <laughs> yeah, and the exchange area, but um do you do know what the exchange area is about? Yes. Nope. Exchange area is um uh, under the scrutiny of the camera for people to bring their kids to another spouse. Okay. And I think clarity on that camera is important. Yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, we haven't had any issues lately that I'm aware of. Um, and then there's one just for the police department as well, which is uh, they don't have anything on their windows over there for door contacts, um, the keypad, and, the, and a, an alarm control panel over there for them as well. And that's another $29.90. So again, there some of this will be paid from there's there some, money, some reserve money. Yes, there's like eleven thousand dollars that's in reserve for the police department right now. Any grant money out there? No, I don't know. <laughs> not don't not know grant, but this qualifies for our funds. Just throwing that out there. One of them lists monitoring of 365 a year. Would that be true to form on all of them or just that one in particular? That was for the town of Berlin Police Department next to last for $29.90 told, but a 365 yearly monitoring. That is for... Oh. How much more of the ARPA money do we have at our disposal? All of it. We have not allocated any of our funds. Right. No, I think you have. Isn't some of the computer? Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. We did. We did allocate. I uh, thought we allocated it for this stuff. Too. We had talked about it with the, with the previous board. But, okay. uh, it was. This was never. We decided on. We when we did the budget, I would we, we took it out of the budget said if we do yeah, it, it would gonna come from our uh, alarm company to monitor mm -hmm. doors and stuff. So there's uh, the only thing that's been allocated is about uh, 15,000 for the uh, okay. computer system upgrade and another 12 to 15 <laughs> for the computers themselves upgrades for the staff to go to laptops. Yeah, so the 15 that was coming out of the stuff and then the rest of that. Yes. And that, that's all that we've officially allocated out of our funds so far. Well, I mean, if, uh, if ARPA, if this is, you're sure this qualifies? Yes. So I guess the question would be, which, or how much of this you feel we need out of curiosity, when was the last time the uh, doors were re-keyed? 
Ricky, not since I've been here, I've been here nine years, so and before that time. So I would, if I had to make a guess, for 15 years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, the police department, though, um, they have their system. That's they that's probably the four tag. or five years old. Yeah. So they have that's, the they have the card reader system. They do have a card. already over there yeah. by these guys. And it's about four or five years old, I'd say. And how much would it cost to have the rekeying done? I'd have to check. That's not because I mean it should be done every couple of years at least. It should be. Well, it's the board's pleasure here. Basically, we can we can either uh, we can get the security under ARPA, so it's not going to be any cost to the taxpayers, or not direct cost to the taxpayers. <laughs> make clear of that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to catch up mode again on the discussion, but um, it was kind of decided that uh, all of this stuff was needed and that we wanted to go ahead and, and get this done. Well, I mean, as far as needed, I don't know. I mean, it's um, it uh, security is always an issue. Uh, I'm not saying there's a lot in here to steal, but no, I'm, again, this was originally brought back on the table by the chief, right? Because he felt that there was a lack of security on site. Um, here overall and so a lack of security on this side also means a lack of security for them because of that door as well and some of their equipment is is also right and and who did the assessment as far as the number of cameras that are i guess required or the uh round hill came in uh forget the gentleman's name he's, he's been here before again he's, he's worked with the police as well okay. Um, he did a walkthrough with the chief and with myself. We did a walkthrough and he was saying, I've got a camera book, camera that's capable to do this in this area that will work. And, um, you know, and we talked to him about price and said, you know, we don't want, you know, the gold edition, right? So and that, that's how it was determined. Very simple. By a walk around and a discussion. And each one of these pages well, is, is just a different um, level of, of, of uh, security. Different areas and, and what he's proposing to do in that area. And I take it the one for 1544 or? That, that is for the door keys, card key system. Only. Only. That, that, one, that one is the one that's separate from the rest of the security system. Of all of these, are there any things, Vince, that you feel that we could live without? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we're living without all of them right now. <laughs> no, realize, exactly. realize that I, exactly. But in terms of if we're looking futuristically at making uh, it again it, it ties into the to a to a, a planning discussion right where do we where do we see this building and its use in five to ten years the good part about this security equipment is because one of the questions i asked him just five years from now if we decide to relocate the town offices to a new location mm -hmm. new town center whatever the case may be you're reading this my equipment, mind can this equipment be relocated mm -hmm. yes it can it's just okay. you know then it's just a cost of maintenance to move it and relocate it. Okay, good to know. Um, Thank you. So is its primary purpose for recording uh, misdeeds or for early warning of uh, intruders? Or is it both? Is there a monitoring system that somebody is looking at 24 seven or? No, uh, not 24 seven. Right? Or, or when you're here, I guess is what I really meant. Yeah, mostly yeah. we'll have similar to what the police, police have a monitor over there for all the cameras okay. right now. Um, so all the external cameras would be, we'd be tied into that and they're recorded as well. So if something does happen, say for example, uh, somebody from a tree company just decides to drive in and dump a load of, uh, you know, mulch over behind the pile in the town garage and nobody knows where it came from. 
that really happened this year. Hmm. Um, we could find out who it is, okay. right? Or now we can. Well, you have a yearly um, monitoring fee, I'm guessing, um, right. for windows and doors. So I guess that's that's being monitored. That, that's and then monitored. anything that happens, you got backup on the cameras on to the look cameras. and see what happens. Exactly. That's it. So any other thoughts on this? I'm wondering if the installation quotes on each of them, if there's any room for negotiation there, it just seems like in terms of the total, there's a huge cost in the installation portion of all the quotes. Not so much, of course, on the last one because it's a smaller one. And I realize we're installing a lot, but it is, um, I like the fact that you said that they're willing to hold their price. That's nice. Yeah. I mean, I could ask them, you know, if we go with them all, if there's mm -hmm, any mm -hmm. opportunity to get a If we went with the whole today. enchilada, is there any room for negotiation in any respect? Well, I have to say that uh, I just thought it'd be handy to have it so that you could take and have card readers on the door locks, but I didn't realize it was that kind of money. Yeah, I have to say I was a little surprised by that. The big cost is, is in the uh, controllers. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's three of those to do all the doors, so that's mm -hmm. over six grand by itself. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's why I'm saying I, I, could, I could go back to him and say, look, we're going to keep keys on these doors, but that one, we're going to, the main entrance, maybe we want to kind of keep, we also start using that. Just keep these as emergency exits. Yeah. And just as a reminder, I have a key to that door. Just a reminder. Yeah. Well, if we rekey them, you won't. No, I realize that. <laughs> Understandably so, but I figured since we were on the topic, I would just yeah. remind that I do have a key for that door. Um, that would reduce it a little bit. I mean, you're looking at a little over four grand and probably some labor. If we can go to one controller instead of you know three mm -hmm. systems. Well, how many door locks can a controller? Um, it's a four. So it's a four, yeah, four door controllers. Three four door controllers. One controller does four doors. Yeah, which would be the main entrance. There's four mm -hmm. doors there, right? Four doors. I don't think you have to worry about double door, do you? The two inner and the, you know, just do the two outer. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. you would do you would do the same door that has the lock on it. Now there's only one door. Each place has a lock. So there's two doors there. This door and Diane's door, that'd be four. So, well, you can call them up, and uh, I think it'd, it'd be a good idea to call them up and see just what the, uh, what, how much that would change the, uh, the, the, the keying. But I'm assuming the keying is entirely separate from uh, the cameras and the other security. Yes. Yeah. Car key system. Yeah, yeah, that's separate. That's completely separate. Well, why don't you take and see if he can give you a quote for just the, the one controller for the for the uh, four doors. Yep. We'll look at that, and uh, we'll bring this up again. Uh, well, I suppose we should have a motion on that. Uh, here, a motion to um, to. Uh, What's the word I'm thinking of? Table to discussion. Yes, yeah, table to discussion until next meeting. So moved. For a second. Second. Now we come to any further discussion. Um, Is any of these door, um, the doors or windows, um, alarm portion going to the town shed? 
Oh, I'm sorry. The second. garage. Any of this, um, the, the doors or windows, um, the alarm portion, I guess, with the doors? No, just oh, the camera no. system out there. Just the camera system. Yeah. Well, I would think that um, um, once Vince gets uh, the, uh, the uh, modified quote for the rest of it, we'll give you all a, a couple of weeks to go over these, and we will go from there. Can I, uh, sure, if, if that's set, <clears throat> I'd like to, uh, I know we added an agenda item. I was wondering, um, since we didn't discuss where we were going to have it, if we could have the road closure discussion sooner or so our... Well, first off, we have a motion on the, oh. on the, on the table. Oh, I thought it was done. No. <laughs> all right. I'll turn away. I'll make I'll, a new motion. All those in favor of tabling the, the, uh, Round Hill security quotes till next meeting, say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Now, Carl. Now I'd like to make a motion to, since we didn't discuss when the road closure discussion was gonna to happen to make it the next agenda item so our, our town foreman can uh, get some sleep before he has to go fight the mud again. <laughs> I second that motion. Okay, so uh, next one on the, mo the, uh, the agenda is uh, road closure for, uh, I'm gonna guess, Crosstown and Comstock in Comstock. Yeah, that one came up today as well, right? We'll yeah. talk about that as well. Comstock's oh. you know, Wayne Lambert was the only house on it. Wayne called me today. It told me if I wanted to block it off, by all means, go for it. We put the signs up. It was it's so soft we can't even get on it. And then the equipment. Right now. How bad is it in the hollow there? <laughs> Muddy. Yeah. Probably pray by wings in son's house and then down in the hall is bad. We put signs up hoping that it would deter some traffic, but UPS and the SD's trucks are still running on it. They're just driving around the signs and going through it and everything else. So. What are you planning on doing? Just putting some uh, pile of gravel there? We probably just put gravel over there, yeah. We're going to have to haul it there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it all needs it. But that wasn't the plan for that. Just to let it dry out some and yeah. give, it, give it a little bit of time to see if it'll start coming around. We can at least shape it back up. It's like right now in front of Wayne's son's house. The road that much higher than his driveway. Yeah. E everywhere's. What about Comstock? That's. I mean, I, uh, across now. So across now, we we would probably just do it the same as we always have. We were talking about possibly putting. We have a bunch of cement blocks that we bought for the Fisher Road project that I got back. Yeah. When. When uh, when they finished up over there, because last year we had the problem, they were going up with their personal tractors and moving all the gravel out of the way, and then they were getting mud trucks running up through there. They were driving up over the piles and people on there doing that. So um, that's in pretty rough shape. You want to try to get on it? I was gonna let those guys know we're gonna go in early tomorrow. Try to, they got a section over there between a couple of residents that is bottomless at this point right now. Okay. I'm try to get on it. It's supposed to get down into like 25 degrees tonight. So hopefully it'll stiffen up a little bit. But we're going to have to wait on the Riverton side to get that section. So if we close it, we're going to be able to go out that way. Um, so. But it's again like the section from the Boyer's Forest, the second Boyer's Forest, the farther out one, all the way back to the other Boyer Forest. It's just between those two. It's the same way over there by Richardson's. It's all just the roads doing this, then they're driving on it. 
Is there clay underneath that? Um, I'm sure. <laughs> we did so low. I was very intrigued. We did that um, project last year over on the other side of the hill because it was one of the bad spots where we used to get the clay slides. Yeah. We took it down five feet, stoned it, put a 500 feet of drainage pipe in it, and then put new sub base and matted it and everything else. Um, it's been running water out of the pipe, so it's doing its job and taking the water out from underneath the road. That road is, it hasn't moved yet, but I can see why that road's in such poor shape. It is just nothing but clay, sand, for as far down as we could hit ledge. Yeah. I mean, one side of the road, we only went about a foot and we hit ledge. The other side, I got down five feet, so we, but it's, there's no, there's no sub base to that road. And I think that's a lot of the problems, but I'm very pleased that the project that we did, it's done, it's done what I hoped it would do. That road hasn't heaved, slid, nothing. It's dry right now. Um, so um, we can keep coming up with a little bit of money every once in a while and do, do some of them problem spots. Yeah. But, well, okay, the, uh, have a uh, motion on uh, closing uh, Crosstown and Chandler, not Chandler, Comstock. Comstock. There we go. How is Chandler anyway? Rough, but dry. Yeah, okay. It's cracking, but it's, it's over there, it's got good, I mean, it's all gravel. That, yeah. whole, that whole side over there is gravel, but that road's dry. It's just packed like an alligator right now. Yeah. I'm going to dry it out, but. If the weather keeps up like it has been, we can probably start grading some of the roads up a little bit, but get rid of some of the potholes. Yeah. So you need a motion for something that's already been closed? It not really closed. Not official. No. We, didn't, we didn't put out a public closed. notice. We oh, just okay. put the signs up as a deterrent for today. Okay. There was a bunch of cars stuck over there around midnight. The police department called me. Were, I think there was a bunch of kids over there trying to. Mud bog it. Mud bog it. Oh, got stuck over. Um, Saturday, I took my launcher down over it. Scraped only once. Yeah. <laughs> so we get some a motion. I make a motion that we close Crosstown and Comstock based on the discussions this evening and also notifications from residents that live on Crosstown asking for such. Your second. A second. Any further discussion? I'll just throw out that uh, that's the, the second topic that I put out on Front Porch Forum and uh, virtually unanimous and, and specifically by people that were either lived on Crosstown or were directly affected by it that uh, were in support of closing it. They understand. Also say that a CAX article talked about the deepest uh, frost and one of the quickest thaws that uh, that caused one of the worst mud seasons we've seen in several years so uh so i think it's probably the right time to do it if if it maybe wasn't too bad that our monday meeting wasn't last monday i guess <laughs> yeah. okay any other well, discussion yeah i think uh and i understand and they were talking about they were for closing it for a short period of time yes so we don't have a period of time we're just going to close it until we deemed it possible to open. Well, until it dries out. No, because I do remember, I think last year, did we closed it early to try and save it. We closed it right about what would have been like, once it starts, you know, I mean, you can start seeing it where it's yeah. it's getting to the point where it probably should be. And that, you know what I mean? It, it all comes different times of the year. Sure. You know what I mean? You understand that part. But then like, some of it doesn't thaw out as like this year, just like bottom dropped out everywhere. So, like, last year, it was slow, slow going. So it took a while. Some of it thaws out, some of it doesn't. Um, again, like I said, the, the biggest problem is over there on Richardson's Flat. That seems to hold out the longest. And it's right out from wide open. And it just, because uh, we opened it up last year and we ended up, hauling over there for three, four days, 
Yeah. How long were we closed last year? Over four weeks. Yes. Roughly. Yeah. Yeah. Close to that. Yeah. Almost yeah. five. I was almost five weeks. I remember last mm -hmm. year. Well, there was, a, I guess there was um, at least one comment, depending on where you close the road, where some residents could easily drop down over the hill, you know, uh, a shorter distance than traveling the two and a half miles back to pave it this way. And so I, I guess that's. So the, the only reason why it gets closed is where it gets closed is because there is no residence between those two sections. It's just the hill and it's, there's three houses on the bottom below where we close it and then we close it at the upper side of the hill because there's no houses in between. Um, I think the biggest confusion on that would have been like if we close it over by Howard Cemetery, so everybody goes out, that's kind of halfway, everybody goes out one way, <coughs> I think you would end up with like if Barrytown Ambulance ever had to go over there and they get the address of 24 something that's on the other side of the closure. Right. Who's gonna go? They're gonna have to go all the way around and north is gonna have to come in type deal. If we close it off where it is, it's a little cleaner. Well, it it it's kind of that dividing area who covers what area also, as mm -hmm. well as some of that. I'm not, I mean that's that's where it's always been closed. It's probably it's at least 10 years going now, I think, of at least a month or close to closure every year so and that's i'm assuming that's some of the reason why they picked of why they close it where it is is because there's no residents and, and delivery trucks based on the closure delivery trucks say ups fedex etc they would not be traveling the road people would go and pick up their packages they how has that been do, handled I believe, but technically i don't believe we can stop them same as a dual delivery rig. I think by state statute, it's considered a necessary assessment. U.S. Postal, I'm sure UPS, FedEx, deliveries like that is considered a necessary item, just the same as a garbage truck mm -hmm. or a fuel delivery truck. Mm -hmm. We really don't have, you can ask the local <laughs> room and, and, you know, ask them to be, you know, cold mornings, try to get in there so you don't get road mm -hmm. you know, but you can't you can't stop them because mm -hmm. it's a it's a necessary set so the positive benefit is just cutting down on the average daily traffic by so, through cutting through traffic i mean that road we've done a couple of different traffic studies on it we did one i think the last spring or right somewhere it's, it's roughly about 1500 cars a day there isn't that many residents that live in riverton and i know personally just from Grading that road, there's a lot of Northfield traffic that comes out of there, and that's not adding to our tax base. So I think this is maybe a step ahead because I, eventually the discussion will get here. But uh, do you have uh, a cost estimate on the uh, the spot repair you did last year? The actual length of the the uh, the, the spot you did and then how much it cost in both labor and materials and yeah we did 130 feet and it was close to 30,000 it's just the materials not the labor yeah just materials yeah we had a grant for that yeah. and that that was probably a difficult section because it was on a hill would it have been a little more difficult than maybe yeah, the, no not no? necessarily no it's just Okay. A lot of material to move in a short bit of yeah. time. We did it all. We we did it in four days. So, all those in favor of closing the two roads? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. You can start hauling your blocks. <laughs> Thank you so. to you and your crew. Yeah. Well, but. I'll give you guys a little update also. We're, I feel we're in pretty good shape. We really don't have that many roads that are bad. awfully too bad. I, we finished up the two worst ones that we had today. So everybody can get in without dragging. Um, some are still coming around, softening, and some, I kind of feel that 
are starting to come back to the good side of things. We got some that are really good, and we get, but compared to what I've seen kicking around there for pictures of other municipalities, yeah, um, I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, and I think I a lot to do is with, with the material that we use. The granite makes wonder. It, yep. it dries mud up like crazy. We put that, we use a lot of that inch and a half. Like, I, one of the roads I was on today, Chase Road, and we just go up through, we'll roll all the mud right off the one side. Those guys will spread that gravel up through there, a couple loads, roll it back in, mix it all up. Tomorrow would probably be right, it'll be rock hard, or at least in a couple of days. Yeah. So, it makes. <laughs> It makes wonders. I think it might be beneficial to Carl. You mentioned front page forum. We have the posts on the Berlin site and so forth, but maybe updates to the front page forum periodically from the road crew through Vince, perhaps, just to give more communication out to residents to have an idea of how things are coming along, what's the anticipated timeline, et cetera. You hate throwing anticipated timelines out right now because no, I realize next right week now we go back to not, freezing but. temperatures and we can start getting a couple inches of frost mm -hmm. in the top, and then right. when the sun comes back out, everything turns to grease again. I totally understand. I'm just thinking more communication no. is is good, even if we can't totally meet it. You know, we can at least work well, we toward can, it. We can put something out though mm -hmm. every couple of weeks. Like Absolutely, the status, right? Like, yeah. I think it's beneficial. This section across town is a little rough if you're going to travel that way or whatever. Mm -hmm. well, hopefully, they won't be traveling. Well, yeah. <laughs> At least if they do, they'll be somewhat informed. Yeah. Don't bring your Prius up cross town right yeah. now. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that's not about it. Anything else, Tim? I think I'm good right now. I'm just okay. We're going at it as best as we can. It'll be it'll be much nicer now that we have the third truck back because yep. it's slowed down operations a little bit, being one truck behind. So we made the best of it between that big snowstorm and all the gravel for the last week and a half. But it'll be nice to go back to a full fleet. So okay. Um all right. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys Thank later. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Let's see here. Uh, select board liaison discussion. The only thing I have to add to that one, and as I mentioned earlier before the meeting, is that we will need a board member to represent at the uh, union mediation meeting on Wednesday, the 23rd. Uh, it's gonna be a Zoom meeting starting at two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, the previous person that we had on the board that represented is no longer on the board. And the attorney certain wants, certainly agrees that we should have a board member there. Any volunteers? <laughs> I would normally volunteer because I would have interest in it, but this particular week is difficult for me as I have a deadline with my full-time job um, to meet for Wednesday. So it negates my ability to do it this time. So what would be the role of that? Like board to, member? To, to represent the interests of the board in, in front of the uh, union. Okay. They've um, I, I would just say being on the fire department and my relationship with the PD, I'd hate to have that go down. Is that anything you'd Carl. be interested in, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> no better I, time to ask than now. Any interest, Carl? Uh, not not a huge interest, but uh, but uh, 
if nobody else steps up, it, uh, <clears throat> what's the duration of the meeting? And could it go until 10 p.m.? Or it could. Uh, or... This one could. Um, I'd be happy to uh, discuss the details with you after, if you'd like, though, if you're if you're interested in, in bringing you up to speed on. Uh, That's on the huge part, things. I think. Yeah, that was my follow up question. Uh, there probably have been quite a quite a few negotiations and meetings, right? So. Well, the only thing I'm thinking, Carol, is that at least it'll take and uh, be a fresh set of eyes on it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good way of putting it as well. You come with a whole new set of perspective. Uh, but, but I'm just moving on to the next one on the same subject here. Well, Carl's debating. Um, my perspective and, and and brad and i've talked a little bit about this as well as far as board member liaison to the other committees and things personally i i don't really think they're necessary i mean that's my role is to kind of do that i believe right and to be that liaison between you guys and the and the other committees and things and carry out your your desires with them and and, and steer that ship with them based on your guidance i mean if you guys are there then I don't need to interface with those with the other committees and commissions and things. If you're already going to be there, uh, that's my thought on it. And uh, I'll, I'll be quiet. Let you guys talk about what you want to do. Well, that may be true, but I'm going to say for the fire department, not part of the, the town municipality. It's that's kind point, of separate. It's kind of that's a separate animal. Um, and, and the liaison has a, a seat and a voice at the board of directors level. Um, and I think it's very important for that yeah. to continue. Well, I wasn't so concerned about the fire department since it wasn't outside from the municipal government. I was just looking more at the uh, internals. Yeah. So basically, uh, to, to skip back to the fire department, basically you need a board member to be on your board of directors. It is written that we have a seat there for a select board member and the town representative. Yes. Okay. The representative not being a select board member. It could be two select board members. What it can be is what it can't be is uh, a town resident who is also a corporate member yeah. of the fire department. Mm -hmm. A separate entity. So let's get this one settled first. Who wants? Who would who would like to be a li the liaison to, or the uh, uh, member on the uh, uh, fire department board? I seek to continue in that capacity unless there's other interest from other board members. Carl, I support you wholeheartedly. <laughs> well, let's have a motion to appoint uh, uh, flow to the. Um, to be the liaison to the uh, fire department. I make a motion. I don't know if I can make that motion. Okay, I'll make the motion for Flo to continue to be the liaison um, to the Berlin Fire Department. You're a second? Second. Yep. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, now for... <laughs> Uh, I don't know how you want to take and go uh, about it. Uh, any thoughts on uh, having uh, uh, Vince be the liaison to all internal town uh, committees and uh, labor? Inclusive of Wednesday's meeting? This Wednesday's I, meeting, I, as opposed to one anyway. of us being in attendance. Anyway, you are. Yeah. Okay. So would that suffice if we went forward in this way? You'd still need a board member at yes. Wednesday's meeting. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense with the expectation that Vince will just give us a report from each of those or any of the communications he has with those exist the remainder of the, the entities on the list. Conservation, police, highway planning, and uh, public works. Absolutely, in terms of reports and communications. Yeah, typically, minutes. what we try to do is bring to the chair or a member of the board in to a select board meeting mm -hmm. um, to give updates okay. where mm -hmm. they're at, what they're doing, 
um, and to give the board an opportunity to directly ask, you know, questions of mm -hmm. maybe where things are at that they're working on. So. And that was very beneficial on the public works board as well. Yeah. There were lots of communications back and forth and, yeah. and Tom Badowski was also extremely helpful. And um, the day -to -day they would they come into our meeting. You know, I'll notify the board and they get back with them and work mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. Typically we bring them in for updates. Is that when the agenda allows? Or is that, let's say quarterly? Every six months they might come I, in. I try to bring one in one board in a month okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. throughout the year it's typically what i do i find that very beneficial mm -hmm. and again it's open to the board if they have a priority like um the conservation commission was in here quite a lot through the vast trail development and things so if there's a priority that we need to address then i'll I'll leave it to the board to tell me what the priority is. Mm -hmm. If they have something that's uh, on their mind, with the planning or the DRB or whatever. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't no have any discussion. Ahead. I was going to make a motion. If, Go ahead. <clears throat> I, I guess my motion would be to discontinue uh, appointing a select board liaison to uh, the five commissions and departments listed other than the fire department. Under I second that. that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, that's um, approval of license permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 22 18 for payroll from February 27th of this year to March 12th of said year, paid on March 16th. 2022 in the amount of $49,111.80, payable warrant 22G18 with checks 21878 to 21899 in the amount of $207,073.12 and the February general journal entries. Mayor second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, liquor licenses. Liquor, liquor licenses. Uh, we have two here. One from uh, China Moon. First class license. And a second class license from, I believe it's Walmart. Yes. yes. Yep, Walmart. There's been no... Uh, Problems either place I take events. No, the chief said there's been no issues. Okay. I make a motion to approve both liquor licenses. The first class for China Moon Buffet, 1400 U.S. Route 302, Unit 1, and also the second class for Walmart Stores Number 2682 at the Berlin Mall, 282 Berlin Mall Road. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, round table, Carol. Oh, sure. I just, you know, putting out the front porch forum, I was shocked how many emails I got. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you, I think there's a lot of people that are really looking to have their voices heard. And uh, front porch forum was a, a great way to do that. And I'm going to try to remember to, uh, to put the upcoming issues because uh, not only I mean, ideas come through the comments, but uh, you get a real uh, deep understanding of how people feel about the issues and people that may have had a lot more experience with the issues than, than you may have had or I may have had myself. So um, it was just a great way uh, to, to get concerned citizens' opinions and, mm -hmm. and, and to learn. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people wrote some uh, legal quality arguments for, for their positions. So, so I appreciated reading each one of them. Thank you. And thank you for your time in doing that. I think communication is always key. Hello? I'd like to put out a thank you to Berlin residents who all banded together. There was an accident a few weeks ago near the hospital and a dog was frightened and ran away. And uh, the town really banded together, specifically tremendous amount of residents on Stewart Road, and they were able to locate the dog quite a few days later. 
um, even after the big snowstorm. So I was contacted by some people and one of the residents on Stuart Road said that they were more than glad to do it and that their community cared. And I think we as a town can be very proud of our community and how everyone bands together. So I wanted to definitely say thank you. I think the town of Berlin should uh, make sure we get the rights if Disney wants to make a movie out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Joe? Um, I, I think going back to maybe mud season and whatnot, um, I, th I think the town of Berlin could really benefit from having a rehabilitation program on their back roads. Um, you know, some towns do this. I, I think your back roads is a huge part of the infrastructure. Um, it's an asset of which, you, you know, we, you know, we, we kind of bandage it as we go come mud season. As soon as these signs come down, we're going to forget about it until this time again next year. Um, I don't necessarily know if the project down at the bottom of Crosstown is, is a good indicator of cost per foot, but that's a start. And, and so if we could turn around and, and, and I realize no one wants to, you know, boom added money to the budget, but if it was going into the infrastructure of this town, of which the common person is driving on, I think they would really appreciate it. And that could be Chase Road, not Crosstown. Well, the only trouble is our funds aren't for that. <laughs> I, I understand that. But uh, uh, anything else? No. And I have nothing. Um, Diane? No, I'm good. Vince? Well, I might have a couple of things. Oh, good. Um, well, for the two new members, right, summary of some of the uh, some of the issues. Maybe I, I mean I, I know I met with both of you on one and gave you a whole list, but this is I'll, I'll break it up over a couple of meetings if, if that's all right. Just about some of the things that are going on in case you do get a call or hear something or whatever. Right. So some of them that right now that are going on are coming up. Lovers Lane Bridge. Um, the good news is uh, I got a note from the Regional Planning Commission uh, late last week. It is on the state's list to move forward this year. It's not, hasn't been approved or finalized. It's on the list. Um, that's as far as it's gotten so far. They're going to keep me informed um, if they need anything to help drive that to make sure it becomes a priority and gets done this year or not. Um, but the good news is it's finally on the list with the state. So they're paying attention, I think, hopefully with their funding that they have, uh, we'll be able to get that, that deck redone. So that's the status of that one right now. We've been only been working on that for since I've been here and a couple of years before that, I understand as well. So that, that's the good news on that one. Um, next week, you'll probably see from me similar to the security update. Um, again, ARPA funds are available. This is for, and there are some funds set aside for a portion of the cost for the radio system for the highway crew uh, to be updated. Um, if Tim's on one side of town, he can't talk to the other side of town, basically, with the system that we have right now. Uh, and it's a similar with the police on their radios. They have a hard time, you know, the dead zones over in Riverton and down near your place, Brad, there's a couple yeah. of dead zones. Um, I've got a quote um, from, um, again, I've tried for like three or four different, I've got one solid quote back from Burlington Communication Systems, who will be, who can put a repeater up on the tower for us. We don't have to pay the tower company to rent it. Uh, well, other than just a small fee for them, but they have a system set up already up there that they can integrate us in, in their equipment box up there. So it would be a reduced, monthly rate uh, to be up on that tower with a repeater and, and digital radios, um, which are the way everything's going now. So some of the radios would be updated, some wouldn't have to be for both the police. And uh, so you're gonna see that coming anyway. Um, I'll get that information out obviously ahead of the meeting. You can have a look at it, give me any calls or questions uh, that you, you may have on that as well. Uh, we'll have, we, we, can, we can talk about the needs. Um, and the void that that fills for us. Uh, then there's always the one that's been near and dear to everybody's heart, the new town center. Uh, that is progressing. You all heard that we 
got the vote from the five towns for the property. Uh, the lawyers have worked uh, worked out uh, an MOU, uh, an understanding uh, between the school board and the town that has some conditions in it. Uh, I'll provide that to you as well so you guys can review that and see what those conditions are. Um, so that's, uh, that's moving forward. Um, there will be some other discussions uh, based on the language on that when that comes time to close on that as well uh, for an agreement. But again, I'll give you more details on that as we, as we progress as, as well. And hopefully answer any questions you have on that. Um, the next big culvert uh, that's up is Richardson Road. I'm working on that with uh, Grenier Engineering. Uh, to determine where that got left off. There's been some confusion as to what's been done, what's been approved and what hasn't, permitting and those, those type of things as well, and the type of culvert to be used. Uh, I did get their uh, previous quote that they had given us and it was an aluminum box culvert and not a concrete one uh, that was quoted. And I've asked them to give us a price for concrete because that'll last them much longer than an aluminum one will. Okay. I've also reached out to the state um, and talked to, to Bjorg, Bjorg? No, Jason Borg. Yeah. Borg. And um, I've, I've got some information from him as well uh, with regards to that, uh, that he's looking at, if there's anything that we need to consider with regards to that. Um, so that's, that's being proposed. Um, we touched on it earlier, the office space and reorganization of the town office too. Um, we're, we're constantly looking at that, talking about it. Um, and, and what we can can do and what we should do. Uh, the question that's going to come up on that, on that, when it does go up on the agenda, is um, you know, it's more of a five-year plan or 10-year plan, whatever it might be. Are, are we going to relocate the office to the new town center? And if so, what are we going to relocate over there? And in the interim, uh, how much, if any, funds do we want to spend on kind of rehabbing this, right? There's tiles peeling up. There's, there's walls that probably should be painted just, just to kind of pick it up a little bit, and clean it up. Um, I am going out to bid for a cleaning uh, contract with the staff and the police have had a lot of um, issues, yeah, I would say, uh, currently. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, going out to bid um, with a very detailed um, bid package. Uh, to, to see what we can do there to improve that as well. So that's that's coming up. That should go out. Uh, I will have that for the board to review in April, um, probably before the end of April, so that we can get that out as well and try to have that ready um, to close and have the new or the existing, um, if they meet the requirements uh, for, for July for the new fiscal year to start that contract as well. Um, I'll stop there. That's uh, those are some of the things right now that are being worked on. The other, the other thing.